professor in different places. One of the things I want to underline is she worked for the Vatican Dignistry for the Laity on Family and Life, and she helped to edit one of the only uh, publications which had written, I think, and edited by women. Isn't that right? So she is quite an eminence. We're very delighted to have her, and I'm also very proud of her because she is one of my sisters in Christ. She's a consecrated woman of Rick and Christine. Uh, and yes, he has a brother who's also a priest and another sister who's consecrated from a family of six. Yes. So welcome, Martha. And um, this is where you can ask her any and every question you'd like. I want to explain that she is our keynote speaker for this year's encounter. She has a two-part conference, one now and one in the morning. And there is an hour of time for her to speak and certainly time for questions and answers, but I'll let her handle that however she would like. Okay, I'll do my best. Thank you. And she, she hates speaking in English, yeah. but she does a great job. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm very pleased to meet all of you. Uh, I don't know what, what is more challenging for me, the topic that they gave me or to give it in English. Maybe English is what makes me gesture that I couldn't sleep because of English. Yeah. Okay, but I hope it, it works. So uh, the title that they gave me made me think a lot. Feminine Identity and Gender Ideology. And after having listened to a Kathleen introduction, I, I understood better what was the, like the, the focus that she wanted to give to the conference. And I thought a lot of, okay, what, what does it mean? No? Why, why have they put into relation you know, this feminine identity and the gender ideology? And I just wanted you to, like, to launch you into this um, theme by watching just 40 seconds of this um, documental that you might know, it's very well known in the States. I don't want not I don't want net to defend it or to criticize it not at all I just want to see the question that is coming out from this uh, documentary okay so we're going to see just 40 seconds of that so we can focus, so we can start our ref Is that? There we go. Excuse me. Oh, you're doing the torch. You must have some idea. Please, if one person can tell me what a woman is. You are not scared for a woman. We ask you to leave. What is that? A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. I like scented candles. I've watched Sex and City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? That's a great question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? I guess because I got a dick. Can a man become a woman? <laughs> I'm not a woman, so I, I can't really answer that. Women only know what women are. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? You want to tell us what a woman is? Well, that all joins me now. My great. I don't know. I, I think most of you who, who knew that documental, no? Okay, he's Matt Walsh, and it's a documental on what's a woman, and he goes around asking what's a woman, and he gets these kind of answers. So because it's just interesting that answering to that question, what's a woman, has become something that is complicated. It's very complicated. What's a woman? And it's some people hesitate to give an answer. And, and they get uh, also upset by the question, what's a woman? So that puts us in a, in a situation that makes us, us think. You know? Because it's not only a complicated question today, but it also could be a, a fount of conflict. People get angry by that question. You no. Know? One can hurt many sensibilities by that question. You can see that in the documental. I'm not. I haven't put that to defend the document or to. I just put that as an example. So 
that's very interesting. No, Ma many people, as you can see in that documental, feel attacked and discriminated by the question, "What's a woman?" Okay, that's something that is happening today. But also, I, I love talking with young people. And when you talk with young women and you ask what a woman is and what is femininity, they don't give easily an answer. Like, okay, what's femininity? I don't know if you have made the test, but it's not easy for them to answer to that. No. Uh, so young women don't know clearly what does it mean to be a woman or what does it mean to be feminine. And today it can be a very complicated also question. So another thing that I would like to put like to, to consider into our consideration is uh, what would they call the masculinization of women's identity. This I'm talking about a book written by some, some psychologists in Italy that they call it's the title is the masculinization of women's sexual tendencies. Okay. Of women's sexual tendencies. Okay, it's written in Italian, and it presents uh, the phenomena of that um, some um, behaviors that uh, before only were uh, men's behaviors. I'm not justifying them, like pornography, prostitution, uh, risk, sex, uh, etc., etc are becoming more and more normal women's behaviors. So that's why they call the masculinization of women's tendencies. I'm not giving a moral uh, judgment of that. I'm just putting that into our consideration because, so if women can become more masculine, okay, what is the foundation of masculinity and femininity? That's the whole point, no? the whole question. What does it mean to be so talking about women, as you can see there, has become something complicated. So we could ask ourselves at least two questions. Let's see if it obeys. Yes, it does. On women. OK, can we talk about women today? Can we talk about women today? And if we do, um, is it a stable notion, a stable term, or is something that is in continuous evolution? OK. And it's a term that is destined uh, to be overcome, or it, we should rather recover the term women. Okay, we have. Do we have to purify it? Do we have to update it? Those are the questions I put to myself uh, in front of this scenario that I try to draw. Okay, and on femininity. Okay, what does it? What what, what is it? Um, how are women and femininity related? Is femininity something that belongs just to women? Only to women? Are it's exclusive for, from women? And if it's that so, what is the foundation and why? Okay, those are the questions that we'll try to uh, enlighten in these two talks that I'm trying to give. How is English going? Very well. Oof, I'm also, I'm already. Sweating. Okay. And how is translation going? Okay. Translation is, is, is it working? Okay. So, um, to understand what I'm going to try to do to, uh, today is um, okay, this is the starting point. And today we're, uh, we're going to see, look back to understand how this question on womenhood has become so actual. How these questions that we have just put, no, uh, what, what does it mean to be a woman? What's a woman? That maybe if our grandmothers had thought about them, would have laughed, like, what a question are you doing? And today are so actual, so pertinent, so important questions that, that, needs to, that need to be answered in a new way, in a renewed way. Are, they are very important questions. So we are going to try to look back and to understand why? This is what I'm going to try to do today. And tomorrow, uh, we are going to have uh, try to give a look more like deep, a deeper look, look and look forward. OK, so this is the menu. Is that OK for you? OK, let's try. So 
talking about yesterday, I'm going to try to use like three rivers, three main rivers. Uh, Kathleen was talking before about water and these beautiful uh, images of water. And I'm going to uh, see three main rivers that had, has, uh, have led us to the situation we are living today. Okay. And um, those are postmodernism or postmodernity. How do you say that? Postmodernism. Post I'm going to learn English. Postmodernism, feminism, and gender issues. So I'm not going to develop in a deep way the three rivers, but we are going to see and try to understand. Okay. Um, so let me start with postmodernism. No? The, the question that we are uh, doing, making ourselves, is how did we arrive here? Why is this question about women who's, womenhood so actual, so important, and needs to be answered? Okay. So in that look to uh, yesterday, the first thing is postmodernity. Okay. So pay, be patient because this is the more philosophical part of my talk, but I think it's important. Okay. First, allow me to say that I look to postmodernity, postmodernism, with a very positive uh, look. Because it's the time we are living, it's the time we are called to live within. So I, at least myself, I don't um, like to think about past moments I like that were easier or whatever, because the, the battle and the, the moment I'm called to live is, is now, not the, the time from yesterday or tomorrow. So this is our time with all its be beauty and with all its shadows and fragile aspects. So we are living in a postmodern world. And this postmodern world uh, represents an advancement in many aspects, for, uh, thinking about the past, and brings us to some um, fragile aspects. Okay. And I'm going to and I'm going to focus in these three um, elements that can help us to understand why women is today a category that is not very welcome, okay? So um, the first thing is the distrust we live in, in universals. Okay, what's universal? What's an universal? Let's see if we have a common ground here. What's something that is an universal term? Something that's believed by everybody. Okay, okay. This is, okay, a, a common belief. What else? Universal? It's a term okay, that unites. Okay. So today, thank you, uh, we are living in a distrust of universal, something that characterized the, oh, I broken it. <laughs> okay. They're going to make me pay it. Woo All right. Um, something, something that characterized uh, our, uh, our time is the distrust in universal. Okay, this is something very typical from postmodernity. And as I say, I think it has its positive aspects and its fragile aspects, but it impacts into womenhood. Okay, so that's why I'm talking about that. So, where does it come the, uh, from this distrust on universal? Let me talk about Hegel. Sorry for that. Okay, this is very short. But Hegel, okay, this is the philosophical aspect of this whole uh, conference. Uh, I'm not going to explain him, but I, I just want to make you see something very interesting. Um, he thought that universal and particular, universal and particular, were opposed, opposed in a dialectic opposition. Okay, but then they were synthesized in a new unity. That's it. If you don't understand, don't worry. I, 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 I don't understand it either. But it's, it's going to be interesting for us. Okay. So what I want you to retain is that Hegel saw that universal and particular were opposed and synthesized in a new identity. Okay. Are you okay with that? Then, then arrives Marx. And he says, you know, Hegel is very abstract. He's an idealistic. He's not attached into reality. Reality is concrete. Reality is particular. So he says, okay, universal is opposed to particular. But you know, this shouldn't exist. We are going to stay with particulars. 
because reality, because reality is particular, it's not universal. Okay, what we can see is particular things. Okay, this is a philosophical problem that I'm not gonna go deep into that. But I want you to see that the, the rejection of universal that Marx sustains. He distrusts from universals, okay? What does it mean, for example, for feminism? Because there are many feminists that have Marxist roots. They're, they're gonna say, the category of women is an universal. It's an universal. And it doesn't embrace the, the particularity of women, of all women. We shouldn't talk about women, about the woman. We should talk about women, many women. I'm explaining myself. Because when you say the woman, the woman, it's like putting a very abstract concept that doesn't embrace the reality of every woman. For example, if we say, okay, the woman is something very, is someone very tender. Like I say, okay, I'm a woman and I'm not tender. So I'm, I'm excluded of that definition. Oh, the woman is very maternal. I'm not very maternal. So I'm excluded. So a term that is universal is uh, looked with suspicion because it, um, like, crashes. crashes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this is going to be an interactive conference, okay? You help me with it. It's like the, uh, playing taboo, something like that. Um, it is crashes the differences. So I, I, don't, I, I don't enter into that universal definition, okay? So this, is, it, this seems very philosophical, but have, has very concrete applications, okay? Then there's another, there are some other philosophers that are very interesting for that, that are this, the Frankfurt School, Frankfurt School. Okay, these guys work from mm, 1023 in Frankfurt, and they, then they, mm, they are, they are, most of them are Jews, they are Marxists uh, with some Freudian influence. Okay, very interesting people. And then they were uh, kicked out from Germany because of Nazism, and they went into the States, and from there they work. I've studied a lot, three of them, that are Marcus, Adorno, and Horkheimer. You don't have to retain those names, it's just something. Okay, though they, go deeper into that because they say okay universal and particular are opposed but you know what is what is universal concepts are universal every concept that we have are universals no? because they i mean it's not reality it's a concept that where we can name the reality that it's always particular but adorno says something very important Okay, very interesting. A part, a universal and particular are opposed. We have to really cancel universals because Adorno says the concept is oppressive. Concepts are oppressive. Wow, think about that. Concepts are oppressive, okay? Because they try, they are like jails that try to put into something that is very rigid and closed reality that is always changing. So concepts are jails, concepts are violent, concepts are totalitarian. These are the, you know, the, the ideas, okay? So that uh, influencing, what, what impact has into feminism? Not only that we distrust on the category of woman, the woman, when I started working on feminism in 2000, I used to talk about the woman, the woman, like, no? And then I, I started knowing more of feminism and I said, mm -mm, maybe women, no? Because you, you get to like to, yeah, to, to understand what's behind that, okay? Um, but then here is like, you have to distrust from any experience that pretends to embrace particular experiences. Oh, that's a very complicated sentence. Okay, I'll, I'll try again. Um, so for example, 
the idea of sexual difference is seen as something that is uh, discriminating. As, uh, it's something that is oppressive. Uh, any, because they, not, not only the woman, we have to uh, fight against every concept that is universal. So for example, even this, uh, inside the category of women, you could say, okay, we are in the 60s and so we have uh, lesbians. And then in lesbians, we have the ones that were more feminine, that are called more femme, and then the batch that are more masculine, okay? They say, those are universal, again. So, because our ways of putting labels and any label is violent to the concrete person, okay? So, uh, more and more every day, we look into the concepts as, some, as something that can be seen as a jail, a label, violent, okay? I'm not justifying, I'm not sustaining those ideas. I'm trying to understand, to look behind and to say, okay, how did we arrive here? Why today Matt Walsh goes into the streets and asks for the question, what's a woman? and gets these kind of answers. Like people are upset, are uh, angry, are offended, feel offended. Okay, why? And this is trying to understand, okay? So the distrust on universals. Are you following me, following me? You are more or less? Yes. Okay, okay. Let me give a step forward. forward. Let me, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Right. Then, another idea that is important, the distrust on strong identities. This is something also that characterizes our time. We look into the strong identities as something that is, hmm, let's see, uh, why? And again, let me go back to Hegel, okay? Do you give me permission to go back to Hegel? Yes. Thank you. You are ready. Okay. So, again, our friend Hegel said, identity and difference are opposed. Opposed? I, I don't know how to draw opposed. Uh, opposed? Opposed? Okay. okay. Opposed. Thank you for the help. Are opposed and are synthesized in a new identity that is stronger. And again, all the dialectic movement, okay? So this is Hegel. Again, you don't have to understand it, just pretend the thing. Identity difference are opposed and are synthesized in a new identity, okay? What does Marx do? Marx says, identity is opposed to difference. This is something very philosophical, but then you'll see the uh, concrete applications. Identity is opposed to difference, but there's not a synthesis. So what does he say? If they are opposed and there's not a synthesis, what does Marx say? We have to finish with something. What's, what's going to try to do him? What's, what's... One has to transcend the other. Yeah, or, and who's gonna, what, what's gonna retain Marx? You no, know, he's gonna say, okay, let's, let's cancel difference. So he tries to go to the, like the, um, the, the social man. So he says, if we have difference, uh, injustice is gonna reign. We have to finish with differences because they are opposed. We can't reconcile uh, identity and difference. We have to, he says in Miseria de Filosofia, Misery of Philosophy, we have to eliminate the conditions that make possible differences. Okay, he's talking in a very sociological way, but we're gonna see the, the application then on womenhood, okay? So he says, we, we have to finish with differences. Okay? Then our friends of Frankfurt, Escuela de Frankfurt, 
they say, okay, identity is opposed to difference. But what are, gonna, what, what are they going to do? They say, we have to distrust identity, not difference. Okay, they are in the, in the 60s. This has a whole a political background that explains it, okay? They say that Hegel was the was the, the explanation or the foundation of totalitarianism. Totalitar because they propose a very strong identity. Okay, our identity that is the strongest and that can be not, can overcome the others. Okay, this is like could be the philosophical foundation of totalitarianism. Here we have communism. Okay, because we have to cancel differences. Here, the, the Escuela de Frankfurt, they say, okay, we have been um, repressed. We don't uh, trust communism anymore. So we have to distrust from uh, identities. We have, because those identities, strong identities, remember that they flew away from Germany because of Nazism. So they say, those, that, that exaltation of strong identity has led us to injustice, has led us to Auschwitz, has led us to horrible things. So they say, we don't trust those strong identities. We have to promote differences. What does it mean? They say, mm, society is oppressive. Who are the ones that are free? in society, the ones that came from oppression, who are those minorities? The ones that don't enter into the rigid um, definitions of society. So they say we have to give priority to minorities because they have been crushed until now, OK? Do you follow me? How are you? Okay. Okay, you are doing well. Thank you. Uh, this is the, the main effort of the afternoon. Then it's going to be more like, okay. Okay, how does it apply to womenhood? So what is you, it called? Uh, Frankfurt School. No, so totalitarianism. totalitarianism. Then this is, well, this is the um, sexual revolution, the 60s. We are here in the 60s. 60s. No? So Communism, the, and this is the, the, the revolution, the, the, no? the 60s. No? This is a very simplified explanation, no? but that can um, make us like touch and try to understand why when you ask people from the street, okay, what's, what's a woman, can feel hurt, can feel uh, angry, can feel insulted, like, why? Well, all this is behind that. And we have these ideas, even if we haven't studied them in our culture. So I see that a lot in, in young people. You know? they, it's like if they had um, eaten these ideas, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, OK? Um, so how does it apply to feminism? Um, here. Identity and difference. Okay, it starts from here. Uh, um, Marxist feminists say, okay, we have to be like men. Because if we, uh, um, that difference has kept us in a way, in a situation that is, it puts us in a, like in um, disadvantage. Thank you for the help. Okay. <laughs> You have uh, half of the credits of the conference. This first line is, OK? Um, so many feminists are going to say, we have to overcome sexual difference. And you can understand that, because they say, OK, uh, we, we can be more like men. We can also do the, the same things they do. Uh, so we have to be more like them, so we can be more free, we can do have a, a more important role in society. So this uh, the 
ideas are going to let them to say, we have to um, put difference in, a non, in, a, in another place. I mean, we have, okay. <laughs> what are we gonna, these ideas do with feminism? Uh, okay, you can understand now how uh, today we, you can feel a, a distrust on the identities that are identified as the identities that have uh, sustained the society until now. So that's why if you are a man and you are white and you are heterosexual, you are look like, mm, no? So here we are free from that. Oh, there's some one that could be, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because they, they are seen as those identities, you see, you see? So, because we want to foster the identities that we think they have been, they have been scratched until now. So that's why you know, women, but not only women, it, it comes like the whole thing of race and sexual minorities. And you know, they, we want them to be in the center because we suppose that until now they have been squeezed. Okay. And this is, in, and this, and I squeezed, squished. squished. Crashed. Okay. okay, thank you <laughs> for the help. Um, again, I'm not giving a judgment on these ideas. I'm just trying to understand why these questions are so pertinent, so actual, okay? How is it going? Okay, okay we are going to finish with Hegel. Thank you for the... And then the third aspect is from the absolute... Ah, I had this... I have something written here. A bit. There you see. I did my homework. Okay, but I don't say anything. Um, another idea that explains a kind of the, the um, culture we're living in is we have passed from the absolute reason to absolute emotion. Okay, modernism, the, the time of enlightenment, thought that. Uh, you can, that knowledge constitutes reality. This is Kant, okay? That reality is what I know. This is the main idea of enlightenment. Reality is what I know, okay? What I can understand, this is reality. Now we have doing, done like, woo, because it's, history is like that. And we think, okay, reality is what I feel. That's it. So what is best? I think none of them. None of them. Because we have passed from, OK, reality is what I know. Ooh, no, reality is what I feel. None of them. OK, this is a reduction, and this is also a reduction. So none of them are. So that's why I was saying that I look into postmodernism. I try to give a, it a very balanced um, look because you can see strong aspects and very weak aspects. But if you understand what do they come from, it's easier like to try to connect no, and to understand. Um, so we have passed from this absolute region to this absolute emotion. What does it mean? And you can see that in that uh, documental. Um, who, you, who are you? What do you feel you are? That's it. Mm, there's a consecrated woman that works in, in Paris, and she told me that they went to, to visit a research center there. And they asked, uh, okay, what kind of concept of personhood do you deal with? Okay, what, kind, what definition of person do you work with? And they asked that, quest, that question, and the director of the research center said, person oh we don't use that word very much because we have a more um, a more size sociological approach or medical approach so person is not something a word that we use a lot but if you ask me i could answer that person is is someone that is a uh, perceived of or perceives herself as a person for example if you tell me that your dog is a person, I would say, okay, it's a person. That's it, okay? 
uh, that was some months ago in, in Paris, okay? If you tell me that you perceive your dog as a person, he's a person. That's right for me. So what's the criteria you know, to say what reality is, what you perceive? That's why we have some laws today the, um, the auto determination, do you say that, of gender? Self-determination. Self-determination of gender. So, because what's the criteria to say who you are, what you feel you are? That's it. Okay? So, again, I'm not giving a judgment. I'm just describing an atmosphere. Okay? How far did we go? Okay. This is part modernism. Um, questions on that? Mm -hmm. uh, now, all this uh, analysis of postmodernity on or postmodernism on women, how, is, it, is it also conducted on men and all the divergence that have. Of course, you know, of course. I'm focusing on women, but of sure. course. But, uh, yeah, everything. Everything and gender. and But I, I um, began with the question okay, what's a woman and what's femininity? And we have seen that are very actual question so how no maybe my grandmother didn't think that was a very intelligent w question to 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 make like oh is that a question today it's a question and we are looking back to understand why is it a question the first main river that we've seen is postmodernity okay now we are going to see the second main river um, but i'm going to focus just in some aspect that is feminism Okay. Question, yes. Uh, maybe you will explain it. Um, like, what brought all of that revolution of uh, criticizing the, the gender roles and, uh, you know, what brought the 60s revolution and all this? You know, what was the reason? What okay. People... Yeah. This is like the, the um, philosophical atmosphere. Now we are going to go into feminism and gender issues. So we go like, more into the, the theme. I, I think I'm going to answer to that. In a, if I don't, we, we will. Okay. This is like the rejection of universals, the distrust on the strong identities, the, the emotion as the, the criteria to judge reality. Those are characteristics that affect women, but not only women, of course. Now, okay, let's see about feminism. Okay, feminism is something very heterogenic. Heterogenic? Does it exist at work on an heterogeneous? Okay, repeat it. Heterogeneous. Okay, that's difficult to say. So listen to Jennifer, and and that's it. Um, when they ask me if I'm a feminist, I answer, okay, it depends, because there are so many feminism that I identify myself with some of them, and I don't identify myself with many of them. So. Feminism is a very complicated uh, world no? that you can't simplify. What I want to uh, focus on, I'm not going to talk a lot on feminism, but I'm going to focus on two aspects. It's, in, what is, it's interesting that feminism has uh, criticized what has been identified until now on fe uh, uh, femininity. So feminism has criticized a lot the idea of femininity. That's what I want to focus on and, and why. No? And we're going to see, I think that, um, again, you can understand and you can also agree with many of these critics. And then you say, OK, but here it's too radical. At least this is my point of view. I'm just giving you some. Uh, considerations so you can think about them, okay? So um, on feminism, I want to uh, focus on how they criticize the idea of femininity, okay? And it begins with the very early feminists, okay? Uh, they, are, they want to be, overcome what I put there, the tyranny, tyranny of tyranny of bi biology, okay? And I'm going to uh, tell you a name that is very interesting that you might know, Mary Wollstonecraft. OK, she's very interesting, isn't she? OK, she's a, she's a very early feminist. Uh, she's from the late 
uh, 18th century, so very early feminist. And, and she has this interesting book that is The Vindication of the Women's Rights. Okay, so we are in England in the 18th century where the roles of women and men are very well defined. So women can't inherit, inherit, women can't work. So the way women had to live was to pass from the dependence of the, their parents, father, to the dependence of their husband, no? because they can't inherit it. Inheritance? Inherit. Oh. That's what I start saying. I hate English. I hate English. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, they can inherit. So um, she's, she writes this book and says, the difference between men and women is not natural, it's cultural. Okay. This is so you see gender issues have a very well prepared ground. Mm, and okay. Um, she says the difference is cultural. Why? Because women are educated and, and to be um, beauty, beautiful attractive, pleasant, so they can have a good marriage, an advantage marriage. That's, that's the, if you, I love Jane Austen's films and they put in that, they put you in that context in a very concrete way. You know, so you can understand what we're talking about. You know? So women are, were educated to get a good husband. So the, yeah, the, the, the abilities they were thought were those, no? To be pleasant, to to play piano, to deal with, you know? And they, and she says, and men are educated in their brain, and women are educated just in their, I don't know, their body, their behavior, or whatever. So the difference, the, the great difference that we see is not natural, it's cultural. It's a, it's a problem of education. So sir, she's very critic with this idea of femininity that she says puts us in a situation of discrimination, in a situation that is not something that comes from biology or from nature, but comes from education and culture. So in those early feminists, the, the idea of like the opposition of the trying to make the difference between culture and nature, no? nature and culture. Uh, what does it come first? And, and they say, we have to overcome the tyra tyranny? Tyranny. tyranny of uh, biology. This is something that also Simone de Beauvoir said a lot. No? The whole idea of the second sex is about that. Is that the problem? She, she goes to see, OK, um, what, what is the foundation of the discrimination on women? And she, she goes and she says, Okay, we, it's not a biological explanation. It's not a psychological explanation. The explanation is just cultural. And that's why she criticized a lot. So um, this is one thing that we have to take into consideration. So, so feminist women were uh, started to see like these uh, very fixed roles that we had, no? very fixed uh, characteristics on women and men is not that convincing. He said, okay, we have to think about that better. We have to think if everything that we have understood that is femininity is something uh, that comes from our nature or is something that is just a cultural translation, okay? And I think the question is important. No? Uh, today, I'm just gonna put questions. Tomorrow, I'll try to give some um, keys or some answers. I'll try. Okay, but today we, I just want to make us think and to see the complexity of the problem, okay? So um, there are another kind of feminists that are very interesting that I, I haven't studied that well, but I want to study better because I have studied more like the gender theorists and not this. They are the feminists, they are called the feminists of difference, of sexual difference. There is a kind of feminism 
that um, began in the 60s, especially in Europe, but also some in the state, okay? Uh, France, Italy, Belgium. And, and they criticize a lot the idea of femininity because they say, what is femininity? What, what men have defined, what men have decided that is. And we have a, a woman here, Luce Irigaray. I don't know if some of you might know her. Luce Irigaray, she's from Belgium. She's still alive. Uh, she's very um, a psychoanalogist. Oh, yes. Luce Irigaray, OK? Uh, I haven't studied her uh, in a deep way. I want to go it's into on it. My list of to yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Uh, Luce Irigaray. Yeah. Irigaray. OK. I don't take everything they say at all, but I think they have interesting ideas, okay? Uh, Irigaray, okay. She, she has a very interesting book that is called Speculum, Speculum, okay? That is, uh, in, in, in Latin, uh, the translation would be the mirror, okay? So they say, what, what are the characteristics of women? They say, those characteristics are what men have decided because they say, okay, I'm objective, then you are subjective. I'm rational, you are emotional. I'm, um, I don't know, what else? Um, so all the characteristics that have been associated to femininity, she says, are the characteristics that, how, the way men have thought them. Okay, because, uh, and, and it doesn't come necessary, again, from nature, from biology, it's, it comes from culture. So what, we, what I wanted to underline from this kind of feminism is the distrust that is growing and grows on femininity. So as you see, I, I have I've given a glance into postmodernity and we see, okay, Universals are mm, ideas that don't convince that much, that are seen as jails, as labels that can be discriminated, that can be like a uh, crushing, crushing. Okay, the third time, oh, no, wait, where are you going? Um, that can be crushing. Here we can see another big river where feminism, by because of some very good reasons, some others are not that convincing, say femininity has to be rethought. Femininity has to be thought in a deeper way, way. okay? Um, maybe it's not everything that we thought it is, okay? Um, Sorry, this is called feminism of? Difference, of okay. sexual difference. So the first one was called like that. Mm. I just said, it was um, the early feminism. I just talked about Mary Wollstonecraft, um, Simone de Beauvoir. Women in society. Yeah. It, the, the first feminism tried to, one of the motto that they had is we have to overcome the tyranny. Tyranny. Oh, tyranny, <laughs> tyranny of, um, of biology. OK. Um, because, because not all the characteristics that the society has interpreted that come from womenhood are those, okay? Uh, and then these critics of femininity. No? And then we have other books, interesting books like Betty Freedom, I don't know if you know her, The Mystic of Femininity, The Mystic of Femininity. No? They say, okay, uh, this idea of women that are so tender, so sensitive, so sweet, so eh, are a very good excuse to keep us in a quiet position. Okay, so be quiet, be good, be nice. Uh, you are. No? Mm, there's another feminist interesting. I I follow her, uh, Nancy Chorodo. She's uh, she's still alive. Chorodo. What's that? Can you write? Chodoro. Uh, which one? The one with the, the uh, freedom. This is not that important. Freedom. I think it's freedom, like that. Betty, freedom. I, 
Freedom. 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 No? Okay. Um, Chora, though, says, okay, all the um, uh, organization of society and of families is based on one aspect, motherhood. And she says, uh, because of motherhood, okay, are distributed are, uh, the, um, the roles in the family and then in society. And she says, it's not proven that uh, maternity, motherhood is good for women, but it's good for society. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to say that I think motherhood is something that is essential to womenhood. It doesn't mean that it's always biological. I'm going to defend that. I'm, but I also can understand this critic. I mean, I think it's, 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 worth, uh, it's worthy to, to, to listen to that critic and to see what, what part of truth does it have, okay? Even if I retain that motherhood is something that is uh, essential to women, I think so. Um, but I can also understand this critic and kind of agree with some of that. Okay, uh, and she says, mm, motherhood is not good for women, but it's good for society. It's very, very, <laughs> no? Uh, okay, so second river, uh, we have mm, different, different feminism, but that uh, look into femininity, the idea of femininity with more and more distrust. And they say, hmm, we have to rethink about that. We have to think it better. We have to, to stop and see, okay, let's see. Don't take things into, like, huh? we have to, 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 to redefine, okay? Second river, how are we going? Okay? Third river. <laughs> okay, let me see if I have something intelligent here. What is natural, what is cultural, okay. Let's go into the third river with lights. That is gender, okay? Because we wanted to, to, to connect the feminine identity with gender ideology or gender theories. I prefer to talk about gender theories than gender ideology. So as many of you may, I'm gonna give you some context on how uh, the term gender was introduced so we understand like the complexity of the story, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna do two things now. Explain you how it was proposed, the term gender, how was it introduced into science, into women's studies and into politics very shortly. And then I'm gonna tell you that gender ideology or gender theories are something that is also heterogeneous how do you say heterogeneous. I, heterogeneous. heterogeneous yeah that is more complex that we tend to think okay thank you okay so we're gonna do these two things okay so um the term gender was a uh, let's say invented or introduced by money again Monet and Stoller. I'm gonna focus more on him. Uh, Monet, he he worked in the Hopkins University. We are talking about the 60, 1968. And he was a sexuologist. Sexuologist. Okay. I don't use that word very sexologist. Sexologist. Okay. Um, and he just, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go deep into his thought, but he said, okay, one thing is this, the physical sex and the other thing is the psychological sex. Okay, the psychological sex, we are going to call it gender. And this comes from education. What are you doing? Okay, this is, someone is getting, uh, falling asleep. I, I do this kind of uh, special... Okay, exactly. Um, this comes from education. 
the psychological sex comes from education. Okay, we have a biological sex, but our identity, let's say, comes from education. I'm simplifying a lot his thought, okay, but and Stoller, let's say that it's something similar. He distinguishes between sex, the roles that society expects from sex, and your identity, your uh, gender identity. Okay. I got a bit scared when you go. Oh, okay, sorry. So there's psychological sex. Yeah. And what's the other one, please? Uh, sex the other and one? psychological sex. And he's going to call the psychological the sex other. gender. Gender, okay. Sex is the uh, uh, physical, biological, biological. yeah. Physical, okay. physical, physical. Okay, physical or whatever. Uh, physical and this is psychological, physical, psychological, and then Stoller, he's a psychologist. Okay, so Stoller, um, this is in the 60s. Okay, then this is it, like the in, the in science, let's say. Um, again, I'm not gonna criticize what they just put it uh, in 1975. There's this woman, Gail Rubin which we, I, I pray a lot for her because she made me suffer a lot with her readings. So, so I, I really, is the, is the, I think the feminist that it was, was harder for me to study, very hard for me. Okay, uh, this uh, 1965, she writes a very important article that is called The Traffic of Women, where she uh, uses the, the expression sex gender system sex gender system okay sex gender system so she takes this term from the science let's say no? and she says okay there's a sex gender system and how does it def how does she define the sex gender system she said is the the way society transforms the biological sex into a product of uh, human's activity, that is masculinity and femininity, okay? So we have this sex gender system that is the way with, in which society transforms sex, biological sex, into masculinity and, or femininity, okay? This is 1975. Uh, Gail Rubin takes this term from medical area, and she introduces that term into women's studies. And women uh, and feminists love that term, okay? That term explodes. Why? Because in some way, it was like the, the term that allowed them like to put into question that not everything that had been interpreted as a, a part of womanhood or as feminine what came from nature, but also from culture. So as you see, um, the, the ground was very well prepared by feminism because from like two, two centuries ago, they were criticizing what, ha what society had interpreted of women. And then gender comes and say, oh, that's wonderful. So something is biological, that is sex and gender, is the interpretation that society does from that sex, okay? So 1975, Gail Rubin introduces that term and it really explodes. So in those years, so in the term, like? sex, uh, gender, because it's, it's, she uses the expression, say, uh, sex, gender system. sex, gender system, sistema sexo género. My English is starting to, it, it lasts like for an hour, then it goes away. I don't know why. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, after 1975, it becomes a very popular term in feminism. All in women's studies in, in the States and then in England, but especially in the States, all uh, feminists start to use it 
But you know what? They give to the term different uh, meanings. Meaning. In what sense? Okay. They say, okay, sex is a biological aspect. Okay. Gender is the social interpretation. Okay. So something that we have to distinguish is sex, which is biological, and then the social interpretation. And it's not the same. They, they don't go always together. Okay. What, what does it happen? That they are going to use the differences. How are they related? Sex and gender. And feminists use the term gender, understanding different ways of relationship between sex and gender. Okay? So we can see here different ways of understanding. We can think that sex is equal to gender. None of the feminists will agree with that. Maybe some of you can say, okay, no, sex and gender are the same. I mean, sex, without sex, everything comes out. No? Sex, what? Comes out. Oh. Characteristics, function, roles, ways of feeling, whatever. You could think, okay, sex is the same as gender. I think none of the feminists here in the 60s agrees with that, okay? Uh, I, I, I neither agree with that, but um, today I'm just putting the questions, tomorrow we'll see. We could think that sex and gender are two very different things. This is what Gail Rubin thought. This is what Moni thought, that something is biological and the other thing is um, sociological. sociological, yeah. And I'm going to give you an example of, again, Nancy Chodoro that can put you to think. She's very interesting. She's a psycho psychoanalyst. Psycho and she says, this is something, a thesis that she defends at the beginning of her career and after she thinks it better and she doesn't sustain it fully. But at the beginning of her career, she wrote this interesting book that is called The, Reprodu the, the Reproduction of Motherhood, which is written in 1979, okay? And in that book, she says, okay, we can recognize that there are different uh, qualities that characterize women and men in societies, more or less, okay? But those characteristics don't come from biology, don't come from sex. They come from the way they are educated. Because she says, okay, we are in the 1979. Things have changed from them. But in those years, she says, uh, babies spend the first two years of their lives with their moms. More, they, they, the, the amount of time they spend the most with the main caregiver is a, a, with a woman. And she says, um, if, we, if we understand that identity in the psychological sense, I mean, my identity comes from the uh, psychical processes that I do from our experiences. So the identity comes from the processes that I do from my experiences, okay, it's very different to be grown by a, woman, by, a, by a person that has your same sex than, than by a person that has a different sex because she says, okay, the girl, the little girl has to understand that she's not a continuation of her mother's body, but she's the same, I mean, is the same as her mother. So, the formation of the identity of women is formed in continuity with relationship, in continuity with intimacy, in continuity with um, the body intimacy. So this ability that women have towards relationships, towards communication, so it, it, comes, it doesn't come because we have estrogeny or whatever, how do you say that? Estrogen, okay. Yes, yes, no, I was just thinking about the content, not about the content. Okay, okay. 
uh, or whatever. It, it doesn't come because of our body. It comes because the way we have been grown. And she says, okay, um, masculine identity has to, he, he, the little boy has to understand this, that he's not a continuation of her mother's body and he's different. So the affirmation of his identity is like in, in detachment, in separation. You know? So this individuality of, of man, this kind of aggressiveness that makes them be detached comes from the fact that they have been educated by, by a female person. And not because they have testosterone or testosterone. Mm -hmm. testosterone. Okay. So this is a way to um, understand the relationship between sex and uh, gender. gender. So some of the feminists say sex and gender are two very different things. Okay. So what we have identified as, uh, how am I going? Okay, I, I, I'm 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> but 10 minutes and I'm done at most, okay? Um, sex and, and, and gender are very different things. So the characteristics, the roles that we have identified as female, as women, are social interpretations. That's it, okay? But some of them say, no, you know what? Gender precedes sex. This is more complicated. So it's not that there are two different things. It's that what comes first is gender. And here is the idea of, uh, I'm going to summarize it, because if I go very deep into that, we get lost. No, it's, she's complicated. But, Judith Butler is there, no? um, because she says, okay, before, at the beginning, <laughs> we have a discourse, which is culture, okay, the discourse. The discourse makes the subject, so the discourse, first the discourse, then the subject. So the discourse may, makes gender, and main gender makes sex. So. Butler, Judith Butler. Butler. The whole idea of performativity of gender and this thing. So if you wanna, then in the questions we can stop on that. Um, before it comes discourse, then culture, then gender, then sex. So what does it mean? That the physical differences that we see in men and women are a consequence of culture and not the opposite, okay? I, I wanna provoke you and to make you think, because maybe now you think, okay, this, this girl is kind of crazy. Maybe, okay, just think. Have you heard about the experience that some women have of the, uh, uh, when you are pregnant and you are not, how do you say, imagine, fantasy pregnant? How do you say that? False pregnancy. False pregnancy. OK. Phantom pregnancy. OK, those expressions are difficult for me. I'm sorry. Um, phantom pregnancy. If a woman desires a lot to be pregnant or fears a lot to be pregnant, sometimes she can develop the, the characteristic of a pregnant woman. And then the womb makes it like that, and they also the, the, the breast and the menstruation stops, and no, all the and they, they can even develop some kind of milk, which is not milk because there's nobody here, but not all the characteristics. No? So that uh, demonstrates the, the power that our minds has of all the body. So if you think, as Butler thinks, that we are into the discourse, into the culture, the differences that are, we see she thinks are a consequence of culture, okay? So she thinks we have to rethink the whole idea of matter, materia, and the whole idea of construction. Uh, because what we see, our bodies are a consequence of culture. Okay. Are you still speaking about Judith Butler? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna finish just with this idea. 
And we could think that gender and sex are related, but they are not the same thing. So um, I'm going to close with the three rivers, because I want, I want to talk about the politics, but we can do it after or tomorrow. First river, postmodernity. This distrust on universals, on strong identities, and this criteria to think that reality is what I feel reality is. Okay? This is like the atmosphere. Then some types of feminism that, that have strongly criticized femininity um, for many good reasons and for many not that good reasons, I think. So, no? But this distrust on what we have thought femininity is. Third river is gender thing, no? gender issues. The, the term gender was introduced into the medical area and then into women's studies, but feminists assume, 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 assume uh, the term with different meanings in the sense that they relate, sex and gender are related in a different way. So that's why I prefer to talk about gender theories more than gender theory, their gender theory, because you will have many different gender theories. So it's to simplify and to say that the gender theory, which one? The one of Butler, the one of Rubin, the one of Chorodo, the one of which one? No? Because they have very strong differences, okay? Sorry, so, sorry did you mention that Judith um, Butler, towards the end of her writings, distances herself somewhat from what she had said earlier in her career? Uh, no, this is Chorodo. Chorodo. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, Chorodo, Chorodo. Sí, sí, no, Butler, Butler. No, 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 no. Did you say that? that, that yes, yes, okay. yes. And I, tomorrow I, I might stop on that, okay. on that difference. Right. Yeah. Um, so this uh, leads us to the question at the beginning. And with that, I finish. I promise. Back to our questions no? on women. Then, can we talk about women today and how? No? So women, women. What, maybe we, we can understand more like the sensibility that is behind those questions, no? The, the, why mad wash, no? Um, is it a stable notion in continuous evolution? What do we do with that notion, no? And on femininity, okay? Uh, what, what is it, no? Do we have to purify that notion? Yes, not. Is femininity something that belongs just to women? Can people, because we are living now, something uh, interesting. Our society is being feminilized. How do you say that? Feminized. 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 But women don't exist anymore. It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? No? So you can't talk about women. You can't say that women exist right now, at least in the States. But we are living in a... Okay, thank you for the help. So this is where we are. No answers today. It's just what I wanted you just to put like all the, the complex aspects that are involved in the theme we are talking about. Okay? Kathleen, I'm done. Thank <laughs> you.